Hey, what's up, everybody? Hopefully, everybody had a great weekend and also a great week. Uh, I know Friday uh, was Amazon was one of the top plays just to you know end up the uh, the week very strong. So uh, I think everybody got a piece of Amazon. I saw some people didn't. Um, if you didn't, it's all good. Uh, no big deal. But this thing just ran. <laughs> I mean. Uh, the entry point was about right here, 3312. Uh, and then from there, we just ran to 3390. It was like legit nonstop on the 15. Um, and then we ended up hitting that 3410. So it broke the psychological number 3400. Um, but it ran pretty nice. Uh, I know I did uh, get a piece of that. So I, I don't care how much it ran. But uh, the point is, everybody ended up getting a piece of that. I know everybody did. So congratulations if you did. If you didn't, uh, don't worry, there's still a lot more tickers out there that we can trade. Uh, but anyway, um, let's start off the week with uh, covering a few things. Um, I do have a pretty heavy watch list, but I'm only going to post a few and give you guys a few here um, just because I want the focus to be very strong. And, you know, I want, I want you guys to focus on some of the swing trades and why I look at these, um, the explanation to some of this um, for the, uh, the basis that our brain created, the reversals, you know, things to look for um they they help with your day trades as well so you guys all know i don't trade with indicators uh price action trader all supply and demand and i like to look at the overall markets i, I hold my futures uh that's how i gauge in with a lot of my trades um and then also be aware of the volume the volatility you know the economic um you know news or just movements and uh shifting across sectors with earnings coming up i mean there's all kinds of stuff going up so you just got to be aware of the markets. And I, I think the best way to gauge in is some of the futures. Uh, and then again, if you're barely watching this, if you're new to the YouTube, go ahead and check out some of the um, past videos that are posted based on the future, supply and demand charting. I mean, all the above, right? Try to keep this as simple as possible and try to keep the uh, entries and exit points as clear as I can be. Um, and then also when I'm day trading, I'm not day trading weekly. Sometimes I am. Uh, but I do recommend uh, next week's contracts or two week contracts out just so you can capture a better move. I know the percentage might not be as huge based on the weeklies if you compare them, um, but they do give you a safer and more comfortable trade um, because data uh, doesn't go against you when it pulls back. Um, so anyways, to uh, recap of the market real quick, we did face out right here at the levels that we talked about uh last week on the video so if you go talk uh, if you go see um i did talk about this level being uh holding right here if we held if we did break above this 44 15 and then 20 uh we would head into this 44 50 and 44 60 level and that's exactly what we did uh we looked for a base down here um that's what we did on what is this uh tuesday wednesday Thursday, Friday, we just ended up popping and we had a nice gap up. Basically, we moved 100 points from 43.50 all the way to that 44.60. Uh, That's a nice $100 move, 100 point move, right? So hopefully some of you guys caught it. Um, I know a lot of bulls came in, but look at the volume. The volume looks decent. Some of you are maybe wondering, like, uh, how come it looks so uh, low? Well, technically, it's not low. All the recent volume had to do with volatility. So volatility is a mixture of buyers and sellers coming in the market, uh, and not just buyers and sellers, but also because you know some event is happening um, that's shifting the markets and creating a lot of uh, buying and selling pressure all across the board. Um, then again, it gives you no like actual direction. That's what volatility is, and it gives you one uh, one solid direction just just based on the volatility but then it goes up and down, up and down. And that's what creates chop for a lot of people. And that's where a lot of traders lose a lot of money. And then that's where a lot of traders are not trading um, just because they're a lot more safer. And then some traders are trading weeklies, which they're taking hundreds and 200 percentage plays here around those volatile uh, moments, just because it's an option traders world. As you can see here, uh, we slow down in volume. Uh, but the good thing is that we did slow down um, with a nice trend. So it, it basically, basically what happened is that the volatility died down. It went away. Um, a lot of the fear went away. 
And a lot of the confidence came in where it's just like moving slowly, uh, moving slowly, but surely into something that supposed to be um, uh, trending properly, right? So that's kind of what happened here Thursday and Friday. So um, I guess like, I guess some of you are wondering like, you know, how do we know if we're gonna go bullish? Well, every time something breaks out, it does have to retest guys. So don't be, don't be shocked if this thing gets a nice red candle down to this like 44.15, even this 44. If we do come down to this 44, like let's say Monday is super red, Tuesday we have a nice uh, base down here. I think Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday will just come swinging right back up and create another little base. So kind of looking something like this similar. I mean, otherwise, if we don't see this, it's not going to be a healthy move to the top side. We can't just, you know, break and hit all time high. I mean, technically we can, um, but I would prefer to see some red candles come in here um, right there uh, to that 44 level just to retest this here. Okay, I want to test this piece here uh, and then be able to look for dip buys. How would I be able to look for dip buys in the market? Well, look for things that are, you know, downtrending and creating bases and maybe building patterns. Kind of like the same thing that we talked about last week. We talked about last week that we're in this level where, where we hit resistance um, and we closed here and then we built a range here. So which is your pattern? We retested this 4320 level. We held it right for a few days even on the pre-markets and then we ended up you know just rocking all the way through with some decent volume okay not major not volatile uh, volume but just you know back into its normal trend meaning that like we're coming back bullish so the healthy thing to see is a nice red candle on monday buy on tuesday um and then wednesday thursday friday we just let it uh let it go sideways you know slowly creep up and build another base up top so as long as we can get that, it'll be a nice, healthy uh, week. Um, don't expect, you know, the break of that 4480. If we do break 4480, um, then I, I guess we're just going to uh, go into these all-time highs, right? Um, but again, I, I want the healthier version. I want that pullback um, so I can buy the dip down here and then just write it back up, okay? Um, so that's for ES. Uh, NQ, same thing. Uh, ended up bouncing right here, just like we talked about in the previous video. Um, ended up breaking right here, this 49. So if this thing again drops down here, um, it'll be a nice pullback. Any pullback in here uh, would be nice, a nice red candle um, that can hold up the market. Uh, RTY is another one that we can watch, please. Um, again, I bring this up every video. Um, it does have a nice uh, pattern forming right here. Um, this is a lot of resistance at the 23, okay? So from the 23 to the 23.50, huge resistance but it's building a lot of pressure here as you can see uh the wicks on both sides um and then all this resistance up here we haven't been able to you know creep up there and we haven't been able to drop this either so this thing can keep squeezing for another like all the way into november if it wants um to december if it wanted to it can just stay here but keep those alerts please guys i like the 23 to 23 50 if we can build some candle bodies up here um, I think definitely we can see uh, a nice a nice breakout for RTY. Some of the tickers that you can look for the Russell are plug, run, and then look at the sentiment for airlines and financials. The sentiment for those will drive some of this. If all of those are green in one day, most likely go long on IWM. Um, so Jets, um, Jets is at a retest level currently. Um, it almost looks like we're flagging here, okay? Um, not a perfect flag, but either way, you can still draw that trend line. Um, and I like this because we did break out from this like 2330 to 2360. This was your supply zone that last time we talked about it and we ran, we came down here, we retested it. So we ran uh, times two right here uh, on the breakout and on the dip buy, uh, good enough for all airlines to be able to dip buy um, for retest. So Jets is currently retesting this level. If we can hold here, uh, even for the rest of the week, um, definitely go long. Uh, and then I'm going to be looking for the, the highs of 2560 for Jets. And I'm not talking about like just this week alone, um, but the trend that's going to change and potential that it can build a base here and the retest will confirm um, in this coming week and then start trending all the way up. So keep lookout on Jets, um, airlines, 
uh, I think some of them do have uh, do have earnings. I think some of them are done as well. Um, so keep watch on that. Uh, solar is the other one that's been doing very good. It actually broke out from this pattern here. This thing just ran aggressively, got a lot of volume at these levels. Um, so here, um, what you see on TAN, uh, it's very simple. Actually, if you want to just keep looking at it, uh, make sure that we hold this little base here. Okay. Um, so as long as we can uh, rally base rally, this should be okay. But again, I think this thing, this still needs a, uh, a retest down here of this 84 level or just the trend line in itself. Cause right here, it just like blew through. Um, so lots of strength on solar. Um, so make sure you guys keep track of solar. Okay. Um, so anyways, um, let's go to the watch list. Um, so it's going to be a couple of these stickers that I have right here on the side. Um, if I don't go through them, I'll just make sure you guys uh, search these out. Apple, Cat, Qualcomm, TSM, MUZ, Roblox, uh, Walmart, FDX, Shop, PayPal, Facebook, Chewy, and GS, just some random one. Um, uh, but anyways, I have Apple here already set up and charted. Uh, we did break over this uh, 144 and we head into that 145. So if we can come back into this 144, um, I think I would get a nice dip by. Otherwise, we're going to look for the continuation. The first target is about 147 area. Second target is about 149 to 149.30. I wouldn't look so much for the 150 um, just because Apple just, it's not a huge mover anymore. Um, and it's more of a slower uh, out of the bank stocks, but when it runs, you can definitely make a lot of money from the uh, weekly contracts. So definitely look for Apple to continue its trend um, as long as it can hold this 144 um, and check out pre-market levels. If it can hold the pre-market levels, most likely will uh, continue to trend back up, okay? Uh, Cat's the other one. This thing actually broke this nice little trend line. It tried right here um, and we couldn't. And then finally, um, if you guys watched that previous video, you guys will know exactly what happened to me with CAT. Uh, I was able to get out green on some of these uh, contracts. I did end up taking a nice loss on some, um, but overall um, ended up coming out uh, pretty decent. But uh, anyways, um, I do have a uh, uh, buy the dip area for CAT. I really would love to see this retest down here, uh, 196 level. I think the lowest I will go is 195. Other than that, I don't want it. Uh, and I am looking for the trend to continue. I think CAT's going to move a little bit slower, um, but we can definitely look for that 202. If we break that 202, guys, we're heading into the 204, all the way to like the 205, 30 area. So just the retest of this, um, uh, this support that we have, and then we broke down. So I'm just kind of looking for the reversal on CAT. Qualcomm is the other one. I like Qualcomm more for a day trade, not for a swing trade. Um, if we can break just this 130, I know it kind of closed barely right over it. So over 130 or 130, 60 would be a nice breakout to the top. Uh, and then I have a large, bigger target of 134 and 134, 50. So um, that's all I'm really looking for. Qualcomm, not looking for much after that. Um, so uh, by the dip down here, if we do reject that 128. TSM was the other one that was on the watch list. Unfortunately, this thing had a uh, earnings last week, so I didn't have it on the on the list, but it was definitely at a great spot right here. Um, and then we, we just kind of confirmed that we were still bouncing off this very strong level down here, lots of demand, um, lots of uh, support. Um, so for this one, I'm just going to look for the break of 115 uh, or be able to buy the dip at 113. Below 113, I don't want it anymore. Um, if, like I said, if we can have a red Monday, I'll catch some of these dips uh, into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, and then my first target would be around this 117. Of course, trail on the way, please, for anything, right? MU is another one. So here's the thing about MU. MU has been downtrending for quite some time now, and it looks like it's falling off a cliff, right? Um, it did not hold this 69 level at all, and this is a weekly level. So because we closed down below, I want to have huge alerts because this thing can technically free fall all the way down to the bottom. Uh, there is no actual support all the way until 58, 50, or even just psychologically 60, okay? As you can see, there's no structure. The only structure that we had was right here at the 69. 
all the way to that like 73. So understanding that from the weekly time frame, uh, what I what I want to see on something like this is for some good volume to come in and to actually hold this and to have my the end of the week close over 70. Okay, that's all I'm really looking for. MU. I'm not really looking for anything else because if I do buy the dip down here and I if I do create a starter position for a swing, I'm taking a higher risk because I know it looks like it's free falling already. So I don't want that to be a bear flag either. Um, and I don't want to get caught in something like this. Okay. So for me and my confirmation to reclaim this level, I want to make sure that we close over 70 just because the weekly candle will show a nice bullish candle and that'll create a lot of buyers to come in. So I would rather take the confident entry and safer entry over 70, uh, 70, 60, 71, uh, and the 7150, I think we'll start trending up. But otherwise, I'm just going to keep some alerts on MU. Uh, I'm not too much of a fan to day trade this just yet. Um, but I'm also going to be aware that if there's any like news, news comings, uh, upgrades, um, anything that can affect this stock to, you know, get that excuse to trend up, then I'll definitely uh, keep my eyes on it. Only because it usually happens when they're at these major levels. So Again, you need an excuse to actually, you know, ride back up, right? Uh, Z is another one. Uh, I know this one moves a lot more different. Um, so the thing with this, the characteristics that the minute you enter, most likely you're going to be red because of the spreads. So this is not a ticker that you should trade if you're going to be uh, emotionally unbalanced, right? If you can't handle being red on a little spread, then I, I don't recommend you trade this ticker. If you can handle some red um, and like a bigger percentage loss, uh, depending on what your account size is, then by all means. Uh, otherwise, just be careful trading this. I want to make sure we hold a 94. I like that it's built this huge range here. Uh, and then we got bought up down here between like below the 90 level. So anything above the 90 level, I think we can start hitting this 100 again. So basically from 90 to 100, um, if we can build that staircase pattern right here where we're at currently at 95, um, I want 94 to hold. 96 will be the breakout. The target is going to be 97.50 all the way to 97.80. And then from there, I'm looking for 99 all the way to 100. The 100 level is going to be that level to break and to create a new trend all the way back up. So as you can see, I have tons of levels right there. Um, alerts. Sorry, I have tons of alerts there. And I want to make sure that I catch it on the way up just because of this whole accumulation uh, phase that's happening on the four hour time frame. And as you can see on the weekly, uh, I know you probably can't see it as perfect, but right here, this nice green candle is built uh, and we do have buyers down below 90. So like I said, if we can just hold above 90, um, I think Z can be a great starter position as well for a swing trade um, just to go start going long and to um, get some confirmation that we're, uh, trending right back up, right? So you just got to be careful uh, choosing contracts. Buy on red candles. Don't buy on green ones. Um, and then just ride this thing all the way to the top. Uh, Roblox is another one. This thing just currently broke a nice little downtrend. I think we're actually right above it. Um, not yet. We're right above it. So we broke on Friday as well. And um, I like it over that 77. Yeah, 7730 area. Yeah, uh, and then we have 78, 75, 79. We have 80 psychological, where people are going to talk about the gap. Uh, and then we have the 81 level um, where we can just start trending up. But I do like this um, Roblox for a nice swing trade. Um, if you wanted to dip by, I'd say 7550 or 75. Dip by anywhere around this level and just uh, ride it all the way to the top, right? So very simple with. Uh, Roblox. Um, so Walmart's, uh, sorry, uh, FDX is the other ticker that I really like. Uh, we're heading into the holidays again, holiday season, and uh, things are popping off again. FDX just had a crazy drop. I'm sure the RSIs are oversold like crazy. Um, the, the structure to the downside was pretty aggressive right after the earnings. And what I like here is that we created this nice little base down here at like 219. Uh, all the way to this 226. I like the accumulation phase here. 
um, and we kind of closed right at resistance point, right? The resistance point is this 229 where we're currently at. Um, and then the top would be 231.30. The 231.30 is like your um, confirmation to just go long because it's gonna catch a nice green candle. And once we catch the nice green candle, it catches a lot of momentum. It catches a lot of uh, traders' attentions, uh, including retail, uh, retail investors, market makers, everyone in general. Um, that's going to create a nice pop all the way to that 236. Uh, psychologically, you want to look for 235, all the way to 236.50, and then psychologically 240, all the way into that like 241 level, right? Once we uh, start heading into these levels, it'll catch more attraction. Uh, just in the market in general from a lot of traders. And then we'll start heading into the 250 all the way to this 255. So as you can see, um, everything here is uh, already planned out. I have my alerts right here already, just in case once these start hitting, I'll create the ones on top and then I'll reset these to be able to buy the dip um, and just ride that staircase pattern up. So FBX contracts, if you want to look for some, um, I will let you know right now uh, for the for Monday, I think I'll probably gonna get these 230 calls just to get some profits in. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be taking weeklies. Um, then I'm also gonna try to enter this uh, 230 all the way to 235 calls. As you can see, they're pretty cheap. Um, so if you make some money off the weekly contracts, right? Let's just say, for example, you grab like, you know, 10 contracts of the 230 calls or whatever, and then you make, you know, about 300 bucks. You have enough to pay for that swing uh, in profits and it's all stress-free. Okay. So remember that, um, if you buy about five contracts and let's just say you make about 200, you have enough for the 235 call, um, for the swing play and you're able to trade it and hold it stress-free. All right. So uh, October 29th, uh, I think the fifth, if you want to take a more safer, uh, safer route, I'll say the 235 calls, that uh, would be decent about 250, 260. Uh, these prices will adjust that open. Um, so just the contracts that you potentially can swing trade, right? FTX is at a great spot, um, definitely good enough to start a position. Again, if this thing breaks though 219, then I wouldn't be in calls at all, right? Uh, below 225, I wouldn't be in calls. Um, I just want to make sure it's safe for entry right above and we hold. You're going to look for volume. You're going to look for good market sentiment. You're going to make sure UPS is trending up as well. Um, and just look for upgrades, look for any news catalyst that may come in. Um, so overall, um, we want to see a nice drive up on FDX. Chewy is another one that's just been getting smacked down lately. <laughs> We're literally from 120 to this 90 and then to the 60, right? That's like, that's a huge drop for uh, Chewy, right? Uh, but anyways, I don't like this for a swing trade much. Uh, I definitely like it for a swing uh, day trade. Um, if we can just hold this nice little trend line on Monday, uh, break over to 63.80 and 64. Uh, I'm going to take it long to 65 and 66. Keep it very simple. If it wants to keep on going, I'm definitely going to look for 67 and 67.50. Um, but that's it for Chewy. Uh, nothing too crazy. If it does continue to go and we create two bullish candles right here, if we can close by the end of the week, you know, right inside here, then for sure it's going to catch a lot of attention then. Otherwise, it's just a nice little pattern that we have here. Uh, nice little resistance at 64 uh, entry all the way to that 60, 66. So that could be a nice good little movement for a day trade, right? Uh, Facebook has earnings soon. Uh, a lot of the uh, FANG have earnings. So I'm not really planning to uh, swing trade any of these guys, but just look at the basic support and resistance for these. And you can definitely look for some good day trades um, because the IV is going to be juiced up on a lot of these, all right? So it's going to be uh, Netflix that has earnings. So I would watch out for the sentiment on this. Uh, watch things like Roku. Uh, watch things like Disney just to see what's going to be moving um, with, with that sector just because it's more of the streaming and to see what they say. Um, what, they, what Netflix says may affect Roku and Disney somehow, some way shape or form, who knows, it may or may not. But either way, you still want to be up to date on what is being said here after the earnings and how it's going to react um, for Disney and Roku. So for Roku, I can't really give much levels just because of the sentiment for Netflix, uh, but definitely Roku does look like it's in a great spot either way. Um, if you want a long over 330, 
by all means, I have all my alerts way up here too. Uh, I'm going to keep track of Roku, but it looks decent. Honestly, it just held this um, support right here at this 319, 320. Um, and if it keeps on holding here, it's for sure just going to keep on trending up because um, it built a nice base down here. So uh, Roku looks de uh, decent. And then Disney um, bought a resistance at the 179 and 180. Um, again, we're back at this range. So I have my alerts right above 180 just to see what it does. And, um, but yeah, that's basically it for some of these um, shop. I really want to post shop, but it's a bigger ticker. I know a lot of you guys can't handle some of these. Um, but if you do, uh, 1430 would be long. 1440 to 14, uh, what is this? Let's top up here, 1470, 1480. That's what I would be looking for. Just like that. I really do like this setup though. Uh, and then PayPal. PayPal, I also like too, right here. Um, it's going to be a break above uh, the 270 uh, if you want to be safer for the break below this, like, 268 um but i want to buy the dip around 264 70 264 area uh, my first target for paypal is going to be 270 340 and then 278 areas so uh very simple with paypal actually it's a break above or the break below uh off that yellow box and i'm just using these candle 269 30 and then 268 so very simple for paypal actually but um, that's going to change pre-market. We don't know if we're going to gap up or gap down. But like I said, um, as long as we can um, have a nice red candle on Monday, that would be freaking awesome. And then be able to buy the dip somewhere down here, uh, just in general, all over, uh, all over the board in the market. So some of these swings can be uh, great. Um, so make sure you guys uh, keep, keep those alerts, guys. Uh, execute your trades and don't hesitate. Don't wait for anybody to tell you to get in or get out. Um, the point is for you guys to be able to look at this weekly watch list, write down those levels, maybe on one of your journals, a, a sticky pad, you know, somewhere on your laptop and make sure that you watch these things play out. If you're, if you're unsure to execute, at least watch it, at least set the alerts, watch those contracts move and see how you could have done a lot better or see how you could have executed the trade one way or another, try to get what you can out of this. And don't just use it to watch, you know, use it to execute and take the initiative, you know, make a change for once. All right. Push yourselves, guys. Um, stay green, manage your risk. Um, and then, of course, have a great week. And I will see you guys on Wednesday. If you guys have any questions, let us know. Uh, message us, DM us, do whatever you guys got to do. Get our attention. Uh, we're there. Uh, follow us on social media, you know, do whatever you guys can uh, to stay up to date with conservative collectors. So, um, good luck, guys. Hopefully, you guys like the content that we've been recently posting. Hopefully, some of you guys are taking in the knowledge as well. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you guys soon.